Cinema, the only show that's three dimensions away from Damien Chazelle directing a slasher film. I'm your host, 3D Jake, and today we're looking at Babylon, coming released in December of 2022. Babylon is essentially a 1930s movie that is basically about old Hollywood and the enter the era of black and white movies, and essentially it's, it's kind of the best way to describe it as it's a, a love letter to old classic cinema. But at the same time, it has to do with the wild, crazy parties. Thank Wolf of Wall Street, but old Hollywood. That's basically the best way to describe it. I really like this movie. The movie is directed by Damien Ch written and directed by Damien Chazelle. It stars Margot Robbie, Brad Pitt, and also Gene Smart. And the movie is essentially about like you know this guy that's basically trying to start his way up in Hollywood. He's at the bottom trying to work his way up in the Hollywood. And basically, the movie is, you know, like, and it's pers from his perspective. But then, of course, Brad Pitt is, like, in Margot Robbie and Gene Smart are these supporting characters that are, like, trying to... Like, Margot Robbie is a character that's trying to get her name out there. She wants to be known. She wants to be famous. And Brad Pitt is a Hollywood actor who's kind of fading away, who starts out like he's... He'll go do no wrong and be famous, you know, because everyone loves him. And then as the time goes on, he starts fading away and becoming a nobody. You know, because he's done so many bad movies because all he does is just, he's so self-pretentious that he basically just fate, like, just do any, he will do anything because all he cares about is his own self-reflection. And then he starts to realize that, you know, he's doing horrible movies and, you know, he wants to be meaning, meaningful in the end. So that's what his perspective is. And as for Mark Robbie, she's just basically a star that just starts out, you just try to sneak into parties and then she ends up becoming famous because of her you know, approach to herself, where she's like, hey, I'm this person, you know, I can do this, you know, because she can always hit her mark, and then as time goes on, as the more fame gets to her and stuff, she starts reflecting her own self away, while the other dude, who is this, who is our main protagonist, he basically, you know, rises up while other characters start rising down, and Gene Smart is basically this old Hollywood, you know, uh, starlet, who basically is like a writer, and she basically is like always around, but she really doesn't do nothing. And so she's just there because she used to be a starlet. And so it's it's very interesting. I really like this movie, though. I really, really like this movie. I'm not a huge Damien Chazelle fan. I did really like Whiplash, but I didn't really care for La La Land or you know uh, what was the last movie he did? Was it the first man? Was that the movie he did last? The first he did first. I know he did La La Land, Whiplash, and I know a few others. I'm just not a big fan of his always. When I heard he was making this, the trailers didn't excite me, but then when I kept hearing people say, it's like Wolf of Wall Street, it's like Wolf of Wall Street. I had, I love Wolf of Wall Street, and I had to go check this out. So I watched this movie, and I will say, it's not, it's nothing like his, any previous work, because this movie is, damn, like, this shit was crazy. And, like, <laughs> the first ten minutes of the movie, like, there is a scene with an elephant that is just, crazy like the, the first off the opening title doesn't show up like till like 20 minutes in the movie and it's just all we're here is a giant sex orgy party in the first 20 minutes and an elephant shitting all over places and spoilers by the way in my review uh, and so basically what i really liked about this movie is that there's so much going on like we see so much of old hollywood and i really like that we see like all the stupid humor like there's a bunch of humor i like in this movie like we get like you know this elephant shitting scene and then we got a scene where we just get like these sex crazy parties that just keep trying to top each other. And then on top of that, we get like, you know, a great score by Justin Hurwitz. And then we also have, uh, we also have uh, a snake fight scene, like a rattlesnake fight that I'm just like, comes out of nowhere, but it's freaking hilarious. It's just like, I love that. I absolutely love that. I thought that was great. And it's just like, I'm going to fight this snake. I'm going to fuck this snake up. And I'm just like, wow. I was, like, impressed by that. I was really impressed. Like, I was like, this actually made me laugh. That was hysterically laughing. And then, of course, we got Tobey Maguire in the movie. He plays, like, a meth addict uh, crime boss guy who has hilariously bad movie ideas. And, you know, I just think that was just over the top. And then, <laughs> it's just, this, the whole scene is fucking crazy. But it's just, like, it's hilarious. I was laughing my ass off at that scene. Like, you know, this hilariously bad movie ideas. I'm just like, I can't believe those ideas. Like, it just, it's crazy. It's really funny. This movie is hilariously funny. Like, it's really a lot of funny jokes in the movie. Some people might not, some people might get a, oh, yeah, and there's also a, some scenes with the union workers. 
where Brad Pitt is going to talk to some union workers. And <laughs> it turns into like a mob scene. And just, it's just like, just like, you know, just <laughs> chased by a mob. It's, it's, it's hilarious. That scene is hilarious to me. I mean, there, I'm like I said, this movie is not politically correct in any way, sense, or form. I'm just going to say, some of you might get easily offended by this movie because there is nothing, like, there is some, of, there are some racist moments, there is homophobic language, and just some really bad or prejudiced mo moments in this movie that I don't condone. But I'm just saying that you, when you watch this, you will probably, like, I was like, I could easily see what, while I was watching it. Like, there, I'm like, some people could easily, you know, get offended. I could see people getting offended by this movie because there are some scenes I'm like, damn. But at the same time, it's safe to say that this movie was from a different time period. Like, they're trying to do an accurate interpretation of old Hollywood, so they're not trying to be, like, just be offensive to be offensive. They're trying to show you this is how people talk, this is how people say, this is how people acted. And so I don't condone what they say and do, but this is just, it's just basically showing you a picture of what old Hollywood was like. I will say that I did love, though, like, I thought the humor was great. There was a lot of humor that I thought worked in the movie, you know, like, you know, I thought Margot Robbie was fantastic in the movie. Um, I thought, you know, Brad Pitt, Brad Pitt's kind of just there. I think the, the new guy, I forget his name, he, he was really good in the role. Like, I think this was, I don't know if this was his first movie, but he was so good in this movie, you know? And um, I also think, you know, this movie's well-directed, well-shot. It's three hours long, but I think it should have been less because there's some scenes that kind of drag, and this is where I go to my dislikes. I really just felt like the movie kind of drags, and I just, you know, um, the movie has a very Quentin Tarantino, Martin Scorsese vibe. It doesn't really feel like Damien Chazelle until when, it, when they're talking about old Hollywood. Like, when there's a scene with the battle scene, that to me felt very much... Like, somewhat, I feel I felt like there were some Coen brothers in here somewhere. Like, the battle scenes, you know, with, with him being chased by the mob. I feel like that felt very Coen brothers-esque. But then when I felt like at the end with the movies, them showing all, like, Avatar, and them showing uh, Empire Strikes Back, and all these other classic movies, like, that to me felt very... With the music playing over it, that felt like something Damien Chazelle really well done. But then there's scenes like with the sex dungeon, with Toby, Meth Toby McGuire is a meth that takes him to a sex dungeon with a buff dude who eats rats in a Gip mask. I'm just like, uh, well, uh, that to me did not expect that. And there's people having sex in Gimp outfits and all this stuff. It looks like something out of Pulp Fiction. I'm just like, well, I was not expecting that. In fact, uh, I watched it with my aunt and my aunt was like, she, that she hated the movie after that. She loved the whole movie up until that point. And then she said it became shit for her because of how bad. Like, she said, this third act was just stupid with the sex. Thing. It didn't even feel like it was in the same time period. It, I was like, it did feel like it went from Scorsese to Tarantino. Because, like, it very much felt like, you know, with the sex part, it felt very Scorsese. And all the drugs and stuff, very Scorsese. And then it became Tarantino and Coen Brothers-esque when it went to the sex dungeon part of it. Where I'm just like, wow, that was stupid. Uh, you know, I actually thought the buff dude, when I saw the buff dude and the rats, I'm like, he's going to put him in his ass, isn't he? Isn't he? He's going to put him in his ass. And then he hates him, and I'm like, I was not expecting that. I thought he was in his ass. And then, of course, you know, the movie also does the other sex dungeon. And then also, I really did not like the retake scene. You know, that to me was basically like, I just, I did not feel like, you know, that that really, to me, did not work in a way. Like, I felt like... To me, I, just, I understand that that scene, I just, to me, I got bored by that scene and I just kept going, retake, retake, retake. I understand why that scene was crucial in the movie, but I, to me, did not feel like that scene needed it. I just, I understand, I, I feel like it didn't need it for me. Like, I, I mean, I could see someone else saying, oh, yeah, we need the scene. But it feels like, I could see her, like, because at the same time, when they're, they're talking about later on in the movie, well, she needs to hit, she doesn't hit her mark. Well, she hit her mark. It wasn't even her fault, that retake scene. That was Lily. She messed up the last time, but the other times, it was not her fault. It was them, you know? And so I felt like that, to me, kind of irked me, and I feel like that should have just done off-screen. It would have made more sense if it was off-screen because then we don't get to see that scene, and so we can put our own interpretation of that scene. And also, I really, really, I really thought, you know, I did not like when they killed her off-screen. Like, it's, you just get a newspaper, she dies. And I felt like it should have just left her up interpretation when her walking into the darkness. It felt very poetic because how she enters and like when it's really brightly lit scene, she enters a brightly lit scene and then she fades away and the darkness felt more perfect as an ending rather than just seeing a newspaper that she died. I felt like that kind of took away from that ending of her. And I really did think that that works. That everything else works about that scene. It's just that I did not like the newspaper. I thought Brad Pitt 
dying. I thought him shooting himself, that made sense to me. I felt like that very much worked. I just did not feel like, you know, Brad Pitt, I felt like he needed more to do. And I thought it, the whole movie was going to be him just basically trying to screw over the Mexican dude. But instead, it's more or less Brad Pitt just being a supporting character to this guy. And so I thought, really, everybody else I feel like had a purpose but Brad Pitt in the movie. I thought like Brad Pitt was just there. Also, Gene Smart was just kind of there as well. Like, if like you took them two out of the movie, it really wouldn't have changed the movie that much. But I feel like it was still a fun movie, an enjoyable movie. I do feel like there does feel like three different directors' visions, and it feels like it's a little bit of... I do feel Coen Brothers now that I said that. Coen Brothers, I feel like it's Martin Scorsese with Coen Brothers, with Tarantino, and with a little tiny sprinkle bit of Damien Chazelle. It just feels like it's just almost like a bipolar director made this movie. I'm not saying any of them. I'm saying I feel like a bipolar director with three, four different versions of this movie. It's just going at it. Like, it's just like, wow. It's like, you have, like, you know, Tarantino, Damien Chazelle. You have Scorsese, Damien Chazelle. You have uh, Coen Brothers, Damien Chazelle, which I'm not, I'm not, you know, meant to be dog at the guy or nothing. I'm just saying that's what it just felt like, you know, like, a director, like, if, like, four different directors made this movie. Or, you know, a director with four different personalities made this movie. You know, and, which is not a bad thing. I mean, you know, everybody, you know, has, like, that director that has, like, four different ideas for this movie. I mean, you know, some movies... Go from like you know Tarantino, Robert Rodriguez and Tarantino, turn from *Dust and Dine to a crime heist movie to a horror film, and so like I could easily you know there's it works for the most part. I actually really enjoyed this movie. I know a lot of people that didn't enjoy this movie, and I know it wasn't a big hit at the box office, but I still enjoy this movie. And I think you should all check it out. It's on Paramount Plus, and it's coming out on 4K in a couple weeks. So if you can wait till then, or just check it on Paramount Plus, it's a fun movie. If I had to give this movie a grade, I would give it a solid B plus. I'm going to bed.